So in this video we are going to have a look at refracting telescopes. So we're finally going to get to a stage where we're going to use our lenses which we've been looking at over the last few videos to actually make a telescope at long last. Um, this diagram here uh, on the left shows a, a picture of a refracting telescope and what is important here is that it has two lenses. There is an eyepiece lens and an objective lens. So those are two lenses and you need to know the names of these. The eyepiece is the lens that goes near the eye. And you spell eye with a Y. E-Y-E. -E. The eyepiece goes near the eye and the objective lens goes near the object. Now you'll notice even from this, this diagram that I've got here that these two lenses are different shapes from one another. What's the difference between these two shapes? This one is less curved than this one. This is a more curved lens and the reason it's drawn like this in the diagram is because a more curved lens gives you a higher power. and the objective lens is a low power lens and they're combined together in order to work as a telescope. The easiest way that I remember that this is high power is that the eye piece has got the P for power, this is the powerful lens. The power. Right. So what we're going to imagine is that we've got some distant star up here that we're going to have a look at. Now obviously you know that that's a ridiculous diagram that I've just drawn there. Not only are stars not that shape, they're so far away that that it's like a dot. It's probably more like what we're going to see in the sky. And because it's so distant, the light rays that are emerging from that star, by the time they reach us on Earth, are going to be arriving parallel to one another. They don't spread out like it's going in all directions. For a distant object, we've got this parallel we've got the incident rays are parallel okay now what we're going to have a look is to s at is to see how these two uh, lenses combine together to give us what well to to emulate the effects of a telescope one. Oh, what I'm doing here, by the way, is applying my three rules. If you'd like to have a go at trying to solve this question, do it now. So, apply the three rules. Rule one, light coming in per parallel to the axis. There is none. Can't be done. How about rule number two? Light coming from the center carries on in a straight line. Now, after all my moaning about not having a ruler previously I've sort of woken up to the fact that I can cheat okay um, rule number three states that the line that comes through the focus will then become parallel once it passes through to the other side so let's cheekily stick this one in here There we go, parallel, goes through there. Now look, these points obviously pass through this place here, so I know my line from the top beam will also pass through that point, so that can come down to here. There we go. All right, the eye is then gonna, well, let's skip ahead there. What's gonna happen here is that the eyepiece is going to interact with this point and the eyepiece is actually going to act as if this itself is a point source or an image so the eyepiece is going to refocus this uh, real image that's been formed by the objective lens so what I'm going to do is a second time just go through and apply the rules one have I got a line parallel to the principal axis yes I do this top one here so bear with me whilst I work out how to do this it's going to be 
the rule is that the one going parallel to the axis is going to end up going through the focus point. So this one that is parallel to the axis travels through the focus point and to the eye. And these lines here are all redirected into the eye along these lines here. And the impression that this gives the eye is that it's receiving an image the eye sort of perceives this to be an image. Ooh, what are we doing? Coming from back out here. So the eye sort of gets the impression that it's looking at something some point from infinity all the way out here. It gets the idea that it's looking at this distant object, but it's focused it and it's got it in more detail, larger size, and it's yeah, magnified the image that has come through. So the ob objective lens collects all the light and focuses it in, but then the eyepiece is the, the, the part of the telescope that then actually allows it to be seen by the eye. And we've mentioned before that the function of a uh, of a telescope is to magnify an image and to make it clear and to make it visible and the way that this is achieved is through the combination of your objective lens and eyepiece and the calculation for this to if you've got an objective lens and a and you can try and answer this please Okay, I'm going to write down, I'm going to finish writing this off, but I'd like you to tr see if you can beat me to it. There we go. Focal length of the objective lens divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. Alright, so this is the magnification of your telescope. Just quickly, what do we mean by magnification? Well, there's a few ways to thinking about of thinking. There are a few ways of thinking about it. If something is magnified, then so say for example we were thinking about something that was magnified by ten times, ten times magnification. What it does is it makes things appear as if there is, as if they are. What am I doing? Ten times closer. They, an object looks like it's ten times closer. Or it has ten times the angular size. We've spoken about angular size already. most straightforwardly it looks times 10 times bigger than it actually is and that's what magnification actually strictly talking strictly speaking means okay a couple of other points quickly on telescopes big telescopes Can you complete what I'm thinking here? See if you know what I'm going on about. Big telescopes are good because why are they good? Big telescopes are good because they collect more light. The larger the objective lens objective lens the more light that they collect and this objective lens we refer to quite often as an aperture it is the opening the front opening which is responsible for collecting light and your eye the lens of your eye is an aperture and on a camera you often hear about people talking about the aperture or sometimes you might hear people about talking the about the aperture settings 
but basically the bigger the objective lens the more light you can collect and that's yeah that's just the one little thing I wanted to say about that something else though to consider is once we have collected all this light what do we do with it do we just merely take a photograph of it no we don't we actually do some analysis of the light so that begs the question how do you analyze light and again if you're one step ahead of me please do answer the question how do you analyze light and what do I mean by analyzing light well light as this diagram will hopefully show and remind you of this is uh, something you would have studied if you have white light it can be split into a range of different colored lights that together make up white light red orange yellow green blue indigo violet together form white light and the principle that's working here is refraction and just so you know if you shine white light through a prism and then put it through a reverse process you can then recombine it to form white light which is, is proof it's not a consequence of the prism it's it's light itself right we get this spectrum of colors and we you've heard about the electromagnetic spectrum but basically what we can do is rather than just look at an object is we can analyze it and we can find out specifically what types of radiation and how much of different colors how much of UV how much of microwaves how much of light with wavelength 346 nanometers you know we can be really specific with this and we can split up light and have a look at exactly what's going on so once you've constructed your telescope once you've collected your light we can use a prism and we will put this prism inside a device or, or use it in conjunction with a device called a spectrometer why is it called spectrometer because it makes a spectrum it splits the light up into a spectrum and you can study certain things about these certain characteristics and really get to grips with the nature of the light we'll have a look at this in more detail later in this module but once we've collected the light we can look at it in some detail we have a second method for splitting up light and in this case what you can do is you can shine that white light through something called a diffraction grating and this is another device which we use quite frequently for splitting light up into spectra so once we've collected our light we can split it up and we can analyze it don't worry about this diffraction for now again this is something we're going to be looking at later but it's worth me alerting you to this now that we collect light from telescopes and we can study it with these methods now it's time for our wrap up let's give it everything we've got ready begin so to wrap up a refracting telescope works because it uses refracting lenses we've got here a situation look our telescopes pointing off to the right here light enters from the right through an objective lens which is closer to the objective it focuses the light and then the eyepiece lens actually turns the image from the objective lens into something that our eyes can handle which is the more powerful of the two lenses it's the one with the P the eyepiece is the powerful lens the power. together they allow us to see distant images how distant well that depends on the objective lens and the eyepiece combining their focal lengths like this allows us to work out the magnification and this is what magnification actually is and then yet once we've got our light what do we do with it we analyze it we stick it through a spectrometer or we stick it through a diffraction grating both of these processes allow us to study and analyze that light in greater detail and find out more ultimately about the light source that we are observing and that's it for refracting telescopes next up we're going to look at 
other sorts of telescopes, the best telescopes and telescope design.